Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we have something different on the bench that I struggled so much with actually doing. I said to myself, no, don't give in, don't get it, you're good, uh, you'll move on with other things, and uh, there was so much hype around this specific product, and I <laughs> just, I, I fell into the hype. I went ahead and, being Canadian and all, said I just couldn't toss it up. So here we are. We're going to get right to it. The Nabu personal computer, brand new old stock from the US. And we're going to get right into the story, right into the video. Let's go. Okay, and we're back. So, I mean, this has been done, I don't know how many ways on YouTube already, but I just could not say no to do this on the channel. First off, being Canadian, this is a Canadian company that was from Ottawa, Ontario from 1982 to 1985. Um, it, this was a, a network. This was a computer that was built for home users that uh, they could interact with this network. They were connected into the coaxial connection they would subscribe to a service of some sort and uh, be able to view it on the system. And then as a result, um, in 1985, the company went defunct, um, would not operate anymore, couldn't uh, couldn't operate, shut down, and that was it. Never heard of again, never thought about again. And then within the last year or so, uh, you've probably seen all the hype, you've heard the story many times, that there was a warehouse discovered full of these systems, new old stock systems, um, that were, were produced and literally sitting in a warehouse. And I uh, initially lost out on the first run of them. And I went, you know what, that's fate. I'm not going to get one. I don't need to get one. I'm just going to leave it as is and life will go on. Well, uh, especially after discovering that you couldn't do anything with these, you would plug them in and without the, uh, the extra box that you need to connect the terminal box, you couldn't do anything with it. it do, it's not sending any instructions to the actual unit. When you power it up, it actually comes up and says that, and that was it. And so it's just a dead terminal. Um, you couldn't do much with it and all oh, those good things. So essentially, uh, you know, challenge the retro community in some form, and we all <laughs> come together. And sure enough, they were able to get it going. And not only were they able to get it going, the actual one of the original owners or one of the original creators of the Nabu uh, in Canada here, they actually restored and uploaded the information and all the architecture and all the you know software and the environment up to a server. And, and today, you know, the the Nabu network.com, I believe the email address is, or the uh, site is, you can go on there and you know, there's ways now to actually get back online using this computer as if you were back in 1982. So what's funny is that this computer uh, is actually online. I mean, I think they're 99 US dollars, uh, cost me a bit more because of shipping and exchange rates and all those good things. But essentially, um, you know, people are buying these because of the quality of the keyboard. And it was cheaper to buy the, the, the whole unit and toss everything and just take it for parts and chips and things like that. And, and, you know, to me, that's a shame, you know, if you can get something like this, you can get it going uh, up and running, you know, it'd be part of history, part of good. And I, I really wanted to add this to the retro collection that I have and, uh, and, and go over it. So today's scope of video is just to talk about it, which we just did ish and uh, open it up. This is, you know, I'm, I haven't opened this. I, I just literally got this in the mail about a week ago. Um, and, uh, I was, you know, again, debating even doing this, but I, I said, no, I, let's do this. Let's preserve it on this channel as well. Um, it's been done several times already, but I just definitely wanted to get into it. So I'm rambling. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's get going on this. Um, it's exciting for me because I've seen different videos with this. I've seen different, um, you know, YouTubers open them up and it's all different variations of the same thing. I get that, but you know, it's just exciting, uh, to, open up a piece of history from from 1982 and 
especially knowing the history of the actual computer and, and it being here in Canada, I just, you know, I couldn't say no to it. I had, to, you know, being Canadian, I had to, um, I, I felt good about, you know, preserving it up here as well. And so, yeah, we're just going to open this up and I'm just excited to, you know, open this up with everybody because again, I have not seen any of this yet, except for on some videos. So, I mean, given the computer is from 1982, and that was probably the original tape I just opened. Um, yeah, I mean, this is exciting to see what's inside. And so we have a box here. Let's open it up and see what we have. Actually, you know what we'll do? Uh, I think, yeah, no, we'll take it out one by one here and just, uh, just see what we have. So I'm just going to take these out. This is the keyboard that we have. I just want to take everything out and kind of get the main box out of the way. And then we'll go over the individual pieces themselves um, as needed. Um, it's funny, the, the uh, styrofoam is starting to come apart there a little bit. I have the camera on a slightly different angle than I'm used to, uh, just because I really wanted to capture this experience for everybody. And my goodness, can you ever smell the old in this box? <laughs> okay, we got the main box out of the way. And we'll get that kind of situated. And then we have the main star itself, the main Naboo computer. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of packing and in terms of what we have here today, it all seems pretty darn good. I mean, everything seems to be well intact. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you never know, you know, when you're watching the videos online and you're actually reviewing these and looking over them, you don't think anything of them. You just kind of look at it and go, all right, that's cool. Um, but then when I saw the actual system up and running and all the games that were on there and the software that was loaded, I said, I'm going to be doing that. And today's video, we're not doing that. This is part one of this, what this would be. I just want to kind of get, you know, do an over unboxing, do an overview of it and uh, see where that takes us. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the packing on the actual keyboard itself. And uh, as I've heard and, you know, seen online that there's a lot of different people that are buying these for this keyboard and for the, the keys themselves because of the quality of the keys. So I'm just going to open this up here and uh, yeah, brand, brand new, but not new. <laughs> um, I mean, this has some heft to it for what it is. I think uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's plastic, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's quite cool. So I think the intention is, I think this comes with a quite, quite a long cord. So you'd have the main system set up in such a way that it'd be near your television. Then you'd have the long cord to the couch uh, that would plug into the interface there. And you have a couple controllers there as well that would interface through that, uh, that DIN connection there over to the system. And yeah, I mean, you would have this and then you would work on it, but I mean, I don't know if you can hear that on the on the camera. I'll put my microphone there. I mean, those keys are quite quite nice. I won't lie. I mean, I can understand why um, people would would get this and and take it. I mean, uh, take it apart and just save it for the the key switches. My goodness, that's that's so crazy and new. Can't believe from you know this is 40, 41 years old and just being opened up for the first time. Uh, that's crazy. And it's back home in Canada. That's what's, <laughs> that's what's awesome. Okay, we just did the keyboard there. I'm gonna put that aside for a second. And I wanna look in this box here. I believe this is some of the cabling. There's definitely some you know, push in here. Uh, I just wanna make sure there's no damage to anything. Yeah, so that's just the cable. Um, I should say cables. Yeah, so we have the coaxial cable there. And then we also have the long cable going to the, um, going to the, uh, uh, to the keyboard itself, which is as I had mentioned. And then we'll just take the styrofoam off carefully here. I mean, yeah, I know it's a little busted probably because of where it was located, but I don't want to cause any additional damage to this system. I'm just absolutely excited to get this. I, more so than I thought I'd be. You know, it's one of those things that I missed out on the first eBay kind of run with them. And I, I didn't care. Like I cared, but I just like, you know what? I'm good. You know, there's some things online that I bid on and I lose it. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had watched that a little closer or something like that. But yeah, I I, <laughs> I uh, didn't have that feeling with this initially. But 
and when I came up again and I was watching it, I went, you know what? Let's just let's just do it. Let's just get it and you know the price is right and for what it is and and if I can get this going, why not? You know, get it going. Okay, so you know, you can see the power cord that was in that bag, the elastic bands that were around this holding this together are just disintegrated, like completely disintegrated. Similar to that, uh, the A-Open Mystery PC that we did a video on, that, uh, the, you know, all the bands that were holding the IDE cables uh, together in the, um, uh, in the system just completely disintegrated. So, yeah, I mean, here we are. This is great. Okay, uh, we're going to pull off the packaging here as well. Let's get this kind of sorted out. What do we have here? Uh, so I don't want to wreck anything, damage anything. Let's take everything off nice and easily. We're not in a rush. Uh, oh, this is just so exciting. Having an actual Nabu. And uh, I know a lot of people also said, you know, what are you going to do with this thing? You know, do whatever. But, you know, hey, I'm... I'm happy to have it because it's a part of history, like I said, and uh, we also have the ability, if we can get it going, that'll be, that'll be awesome. So on the front of it, we look like we have the, the power button itself, which is quite, quite firm, which is nice to see. Then we have a reset button and then different various lights, I imagine, will come on there. Uh, not completely sure other than ventilation and then Nabu personal computer with the Nabu symbol there as well. And on the sides, we just have, you know, the ventilation on both sides. And then on the back, let's turn this around. I mean, it looks like we would have options for expansion here as well. We have the keyboard connector. It says that we would accept a printer. Uh, we have a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 4, 15 pin uh, output there. And then the adapter. That's what I was referring to earlier. This would go to an adapter. Now, I think the adapter is still available online. So I may end up picking it up just because now that I have the main system, get the adapter, preserve the whole unit. But there's other ways by using Raspberry Pis, uh, using USB to serial adapters. There's different uh, applications you can use to be able to get this on the network, which is currently online in today's world. Uh, so then we have the cable in and cable out. So that would go to your coaxial cable connection in your house, because that's how the network service was delivered to uh, the Nabu service was delivered to the home user was through that uh, process there. The other thing I know, do know is that um, I'm going to open this up in a minute, just take a look inside. But a lot of people have been complaining about the fan that's inside that, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a solid metal fan. So it's built well. And there's all these modifications on the Internet to uh, prevent it from scraping the sides of the cowling. Well, Others have shown it. It's just a loose screw, <laughs> so it's a little off center. So um, you know, to tighten it. So hopefully this has no issues. But if it does, it's good to know that. So it says fuse internally, refuse to owner's manual. That's great. And then we have channel three or channel four. I'm gonna put it on channel three just because. Well, up here in Canada, I always had it on channel three for all of our cable type things. But the fact that it has a cable in and cable out pass through, probably you'd be able to connect it to a cable box, cable converter box. I mean, we're talking 1982. Uh, not exactly a lot of channels were around at the time, but uh, definitely would have that functionality. And then we have the video out and the audio out. So that would go to your TV. Um, I do have a mini TV. I'm hoping to get that kind of connected today. We'll see if we can get that going. Then the keyboard connector, as I mentioned, the DIN connector, and then the printer and the adapter. So, and the fan. Okay, so that's the, um, yeah, that's the uh, unit itself. So we have the keyboard, we have the power, and we have the bag of cables. So, I mean, they're so kind. They were, <laughs> I'm going to open this up. They were so kind to give us the coaxial cable, an extra one, which is, which is great. I don't think I'm going to need this for what we're doing at the moment. Obviously, we're not connecting this to the cable. Believe it or not, I still have coaxial cable in my home. And then we have the actual connector for the Nabu keyboard to the main unit, which is just awesome. I just love this keyboard. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I didn't, I didn't even think much about this, but I mean, having it in hand, I can't. I'm so looking forward to utilizing this on the uh, on the network when I can get it going. Okay, Nabu Nabu Personal Computers Guide. I would offer to put this up on archive.org or whatever, but I have this strong feeling it's already been done. 
So I'm not going to go through all the pages in this. I know it's been done on other, other YouTube channels. But I mean, you just look having, I mean, heck, that family is super happy. They're so happy to have a Nabu. I'm pretty, pretty happy that, uh, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be, <laughs> I'll be able to duplicate this. But, you know, it talks about the introduction, what it is, uh, what the computer is, what you can do. And, you know, this is one of the early games that were, they were playing as part of this. And you can see it just on the screen there. And they have an, they have a, um, looks like a joystick of some sort that's plugged in a controller plugged into it there. And uh, yeah, about this guy, talks about the guy, talks about all the basic functionality, talks about the components. Now, uh, it says that, you know, it says that it comes with a controller, this one. So that's the adapter box and this of uh, the Nabu PC box. Now, this did not come with the actual controller or what have you. It says one adapter with the power cord. Yes. One cable with one meter with a circular. Yes. And one cable one meter long circular pin, uh, five pin plug on each end. So it says you receive a slightly smaller box and contains some of the other parts you'll need in your system. So not one of these indicate that it shows that it comes with everything else, but not the, um, not the controller. And it says one game controller may have been provided separately. So, you know, it depended on how they packaged it. You know, I'd be interested to see if I can find that honestly. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, outside of that, I mean, I just love the fact there's color pictures <laughs> in this, uh, in this book. I think that's great. So Nebu personal computer, let's talk about, uh, it talks about the unit, talks about how to use the different keyboard, the game controller. There's the adapter that was on top that would interact with the system. So the interact, the adapter tells the system that it's there to, to, to work, to interact. And the more I see this, the more I want to have the adapter. So I'll see if I can locate that. I don't think it's as, as expensive. Well, it's, it's definitely cheaper than what what's the rest of it is. And it shows all the different types of connectors, shows you how to connect everything to your system. Um, pretty straightforward. And because we're not going to be doing much with it today, outside of just turning it on to make sure it works, we'll take a look inside and all that good stuff. So then we're looking at all the different connections and then just tells you how to connect it, like I said earlier. Um, but yeah, it just... Tells you how to use the keyboard, getting to know your keyboard. Uh, what's a program? What's auto repeat? I mean, remember, this was 1982. Computers weren't heavily into the family homes, and this was opening up that possibility now for everybody. Um, yeah, just getting started tells you how to connect everything. I mean, I'm not going to. There's the network guide. So I've seen this online working. So we have family games, education, and personal productivity. Uh, for all the different games, and then it tells you how to access, how to navigate those. So the games, Astrolander, Backgammon, Circuit, um, Demotrons, and Mania. And then uh, let's see what else it has. I'm just looking through to see. And then it has some troubleshooting, you know, what to do if this doesn't work, you know, what cable to use. And also it says peripherals and a disk drive. So they were really pushing to see if this would, you know, compete with whatever computers were on the market at the time. But, uh, you know, I doubt very much that that printers anywhere online are available. Uh, and then the same thing with the disk drive. But I thought you have the main system is, uh, is, is a good start. So it says here, this is the technical specifications of the actual unit. So it has a Zilog Z80A 8 uh, microprocessor, 8-bit microprocessor running at 3.58 megahertz. has 64 kilobytes of dynamic RAM, so DRAM for program and data storage. ROM has four kilobytes of used for self-test diagnostics and initial loading of the operating system software. Video memory of 16 kilobytes. Oh, I mean, this is just flying. Of dynamic RAM, so DRAM for exclusive use by video processor. Display processor, so separate processor, so it's text mode and provides 24 40 character rows of two colors, uh, foreground and background. 256 by 192 pixels is what it's indicating here. Uh, 15 colors. So there we go. Sound generator. <laughs> sound generator. Uh, programmable sound generator featuring three independently controllable channels, tone and noise generation, amplitude, uh, and envelope control for complex sound generation. I mean, heck, it has complex sound generation. How can you not want one of these? Keyboard, a detachable microprocessor controlled full stroke keyboard <laughs> with two key rollover and auto repeat 66 keys 58 on main uh, keyboard plus a key so you can continue on talks about the printer port adapter interface itself video and audio inputs or outputs and then cable inputs tv inputs outputs expansion so four 30 pin 
expansion port from that boot option cards. Access slots at rear of enclosure. So, I mean, I, I don't know what expansions would have come with this or available, but again, this only had a three-year run, so I can't see there being too many. Talks about the power requirements. I'll definitely take a look at any caps that are on here. I mean, it's been sitting for 40 years. And then what environment to operate it in uh, and store it in. But, you know, minus 20 to plus 70. I'm not sure of the warehouse that this was sitting in, but uh, definitely something to uh, to take a look at. All right. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, it just goes on about the adapter technical connection. And then we have our index, which is there. So I think what we should do is get the bench all kind of cleaned up, do a different camera angle, see if we can get it kind of, uh, you know, get the unit kind of taken apart and see what we can see inside. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the four screws that are here. So we have two on the right side. Let's just put them here so we don't lose them. And I believe we have two on the left side. Here we go. We have that. Okay, we'll just turn it around here and get the left side screws. Again, we're just checking it out to make sure there's nothing inside that's going to jump out at us or blow up or anything like that. I just want to make sure that we're not turning on a machine and I didn't get one of those, you know, uh, I've seen so many online that they've had some problems and things like that. So I don't want to, I don't want to dud here. Okay. I'll oh, slide that around and that just kind of slides up, I guess. So nothing, uh, yeah, nothing fancy there. Okay. The inside of the Naboo. And every, I love, I'm a big Star Wars fan. So every time I hear Naboo, I kind of chuckle inside. All right. So here is our motherboard on our Naboo. Now, I mean, I wouldn't even imagine like, just looking at the system from 1982 and just the beauty. I mean, not one bit of dust in the whole machine. Everything's just looking fantastic here. Uh, danger mains voltage. So it's so funny. Just, I'm going to take that off just because this has not been plugged in. So I'm pretty confident I'll be able to uh, look inside there just to see. But I mean, there's your, there's your cable converter, your cable coaxial box there. And I'm just looking at all the different components and nothing, I mean, it's funny, the resistors, sorry, the capacitors, the way they are, are flipped around there. I don't exactly know on the board uh, what these are. It looks like almost like memory expansions or, or ability to, you know, put in expansions. And I don't know if that has to do with the four in the back, like this would be a cable that would kind of connect here and then it would run to the each of the four because there's four of them here and there's four uh, ports in the back of the machine. So it's very possible that that's what that, um, that is. And so, yeah, we have the uh, sound chip that's right here. We have the main processor, the Zilog, uh, that would be the 3.8 megahertz processor. We have a revision on this. So I don't know if that's a, the CMOS BIOS sort of, um, the instruction set for the system. And we have, um, yeah, we have chips from 1980 here, date stamp 1980. So they definitely use some chips. Uh, from that. But just looking at this is just so cool. I'm just absolutely flabbergasted by this. And, you know, everything's looking good. I mean, we're not, we're going to know when we plug it in. I mean, I'm not going to lie, we'll plug it in and, and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just want to check out that fan, uh, just because I'm just looking at everything here to make sure it's going to be okay to remove it. I just want to look at the fan inside, because that's the thing that I'm being told that can cause damage inside and it's just about a loose screw and that's right here that goes to the back of the machine that cools everything down. I mean, so simplistic, but my goodness, just absolutely crazy. And that just slides up like that. Yeah, that's all it is. Just comes right out like that. And there's that fan. Yeah, so you can hear. I mean, it just spins freely. Now, my understanding is people have had to take this out and there's a screw uh, that kind of tightens the bearing up inside there. And and so, you know, people have had challenges with that. Now, fortunately, I don't have a system that has that issue. Yeah, it's just fine. It just fr freely flows fine because you would hear the scraping as the cowling. And this is solid metal. I mean, that's that's just all solid metal, the fan and everything. So that's great. Okay, let's turn this around here and look at the caps here of the power supply. So I'm seeing here, I mean, a lot of big caps, and I'm not seeing any caps that would indicate there's any bulging or any leaking on the board, which is awesome. Not to say that that's not going to happen when I first turn it on, but that's the risk you take. 
uh, when you get the uh, when you get the system. All right. Okay. I think it's good time to, I mean, I could just stare at this all day. I just love, love, love the old system, especially if you get something 40 ish years old and brand new stock. I mean, new old stock. I, I just, anyway, just, yeah, I'll stop. I just, I can't, can't get enough of it. I just, I, I didn't think I'd be like this. I'll be honest with you. It's just going to be another one of those. Okay. Yeah. It's an old system. We're going to do a video on it. Um, you know, I'm, up here in Canada, it was made in Canada, just kind of cliche, you should get it. And, uh, you know, for the prices, right, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it worked out well, but then here we are uh, with the system that, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to excited to have it. Okay, so I think the next step we should do is I'm going to put these screws back in, kind of get everything kind of put back together. And then once everything's back together, I think what we'll do is get this machine fired up. Actually, I think what I'll do is fire it up with the with the cover off because I want to see if there's any sort of um, any sort of these caps uh, decide to um, not play nice. And the same thing with the uh, power supply. Obviously, I'm covering it up because I don't want any risk to myself or anything like that. But uh, but yeah, I think that'll be that'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now and get it kind of everything kind of situated, and we'll get to see if we can get this going. Okay, and we're back with a different camera angle. We kind of have everything set up now. I have an old TV I found that has the RCA jacks, so we have them connected to the back of the Nabu. And uh, I have the trusty power cord right here. I haven't plugged in yet. So let's plug it in. Nothing so far. No magic smoke. Okay, I'm hitting the power button. Fans going. We have a screen. Yeah, just look at that. that adapter failure, that's it. We have a working system. <laughs> I'm looking at everything, making sure everything is good. And the sink's a little off there, but I think that's the cable I'm using in the TV. I'm sure there's lots of different things we can do to get that going. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the idea is that the system was, it comes up alert on the front here. It was, it was paused, it was going on and off. It was doing some lights on the front and it was checking to see if it could find the adapter. Now with the adapter, it would just bring you one step closer. I don't know if it offers some sort of basic that comes with this or what have you, but it brings you that one step closer. And then once you're there, then with the adapter, then it goes and looks for the service um, to do that. Now, the adapter won't serve much more purpose other than just one more step. It still won't be able to get online for me, but it is something that I'm definitely going to invest in and get just to complete the package. But you saw it here first, everybody. We did a complete unboxing of a 40 year old computer from Canada. And it's just absolutely amazing. Yes, it went defunct, but the fact that the community, the retro community just amazes me, got together and was able to get it working uh, online again, get this back up and running on the full network as if you were back in 1982. And special thanks to the owners, uh, the co-creators, I should say, of Nabu because they saw all the outcries online and all because this person found these systems in a warehouse. And I don't know how many he has or found, but there's been hundreds sold. So um, definitely, uh, you know, definitely awesome to see. So for today's video, we're going to end it there just because I don't have the setup yet for to get the simulated adapter. I'm going to work on getting that and kind of bring everybody through uh, what the menus would look like and play some games uh, as if we're back in 1982 just to see what the system had. Uh, but I'm just, I got goosebumps now that I got this going. I'm just so excited. It, you know, it's working just wonderfully. And again, never seeing the light of day for 40 years. And here we are on the retro recall with a Nabu personal computer uh, from Canada, back in Canada, and uh, it's working great. So 
this is in this is it for part one so if you like today's video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it really helps the channel really helps me grow hit the notification button every time i do new content like this you'll be notified i'll leave a comment down below i'm pretty confident that i didn't tell everything right and that's okay because we all learn from each other as we do this so leave a comment below um, and i try to reply to everyone's comments and again always making new content Love all the subscribers, love all the interaction and the community. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.